Hey everybody. Hey everybody, it's Mike Monkey Fab and Bob. <laughs> Bob stalking me. Here's a quick quick teaser. What? What happened? Nothing. Okay. Quick teaser of stuff to come. Just in case. So I was going been posting videos again. Haven't made content in a while. Uh, just got busy. It's that time of year. Busy busy. Uh, so I've been posting up <laughs> posting up uh have been posting up videos then kind of caught back up. The last videos were like back from uh, October-ish? No, November-ish, I think I said in the last video. And it's now, uh, it is now March, like 11th, I think, or something like that, uh, Saturday. And I hadn't really given you guys any more updates or made really any more updates on the Phoenix. Uh, so today I went around and I just drove it. I threw a little uh, GoPro up in the window. I'll include a little bit of that footage after this. Uh, but just thought, since we obviously have other things going on and I want to move on to other things, I've been looking forward. I missed my, uh, my Volvo. I broke it. Long story. Uh, but I miss it. I really like the Volvo. It just rides nice, smooth. Anybody that's driven a Volvo, an old Volvo, knows what I'm talking about. They feel like a tank. They're built like a tank. Uh, it's enjoyable. This guy is, it's okay. It's just kind of uh, floaty. It's not, uh, it doesn't inspire confidence <laughs> when you drive uh, a 1978 uh, X body uh, from GM Motors. Now, I suppose you could go through and do a bunch of suspension work and all that good stuff but I'm pretty happy with it right now I mean it's fun it's a good daily driver I usually uh, at the end of the day when I'm done making all the monkey fab stuff I'll take it to the post office I haven't I still haven't done <laughs> the center console I have a plan <laughs> or the uh, air conditioner but uh, I'm just kind of over it you ever get to that point with your project where you're like yeah I'm kind of over this the air conditioner I'm just going to take to a shop, drop it off, and let them install one of the vintage air deals in it and be done with it. Uh, the center console I'll make. I'll make it. I, I know I can. I have the, we have the technology. We have the capabilities. We can build it. Uh, but here's an update on where we're at with this guy. Let me flip my thing around. I'll turn my microphone around so I'm trying to do a better job on the audio come to find out when you make youtube videos the audio quality is more important than the actual video quality it's crazy huh so uh yeah 50 shades of brown got all kinds of help today bob you're not supposed to be in the garage and it hasn't changed much since you guys last saw it on the video that i posted yesterday uh but it has changed a little bit the astute among you We'll, we'll notice, oh, you got a, your mama gave you a, a, uh, a carrot. So spoiled, he is so spoiled. So the astute amongst you will notice that there's something big going on. There's been a big change, <laughs> about 275. So yes, like I talked about constantly, I wanted to uh, get the Mickeys on the back and I did. I just bought an extra set of, uh, wheels since they were pretty cheap and threw on these guys uh 275 60 15 mickey thompson or the gt street something ys maybe uh yeah so and you can tell they've been they've been doing their job they've been breaking them in uh and that, that's really kind of the last thing i've done since I've finished those videos is just put these on. It helps incredibly. Okay, I can launch this guy in first uh, pretty hard. It doesn't launch in boost. I haven't, I'm not good with the tuning. It's actually what I've been doing today when I was driving around. I had, uh, I always feel like an idiot when I'm talking about the tuning because I haven't educated myself and that's my own fault. Uh, Semi educated myself, but with the tuner studio, there is a, on Tuner Studio, from what I understand from Mike, the guy that runs the Gold Box company, uh, EFI Source, that there is an input where you put the commanded fuel, the required fuel, I think it's called. And that number, he said, it is used to base all the other calculations off of. 
And what I had noticed is in my fuel map, it's just kind of a, a sing, it's like 50. It was like everything was 50, like across the whole map. Uh, and then from another video that I saw with Matt, Matt said that 100 should be about your uh, zero, your uh, 100 kPa line should be around 100ish. And that, so I, I said, well, maybe because what I had originally done is I put a number in that that required fuel. Uh, I think it was four point, it was 4.2, and then I put in the injectors that I had 1500 cc injectors, and I thought that that would make the calculation based off of that, and then do the calculations down the way. Well, like I said, all the calculations, like your fuel ex enrichment, uh, ex fuel, the Excel pump uh, enrichment, the uh, fuel injectors, like how much the, the spray, uh, what's adjusted uh, when it goes in and adjusts for your uh, ethanol content. All these scalings that are being done is based off of that primary number. So I thought, well, maybe maybe that putting the CC in there is nothing but a note to myself and I need to half that number. So I did that today and it seems like it maybe made things a little bit crisper, but I have to go back through and basically reconstruct the entire fuel map. So I was just driving around today and what I did is I halved that and then I went into my map and I just doubled the entire map, uh, which seemed to be around okay-ish. And then I put the auto-tune on and let the auto-tune kind of do its job. And then once I get the auto-tune close, I'll go take some data logs and then what I'll do is I'll send it to one of my friends who, whom are way smaller than me that know how to do this stuff and say, please fix my map. <laughs> and, and it'll probably drive fine. Uh, the inside is still a disaster because, again, there's no need in doing this until the whole dash has been ripped out to put the air conditioner in. But it's still pleasant. It's nice. Get the bench seats. The interior is pretty nice. The uh, headliner could use a redoing is it's a little droopy a little wavy i'd like to have it redone and have some sort of uh insulation put up in there to because in the summertime when the heat's banging down on the ceiling on the uh, roof you can really kind of feel it cooking through there but yeah overall uh the brakes been working great you guys saw i swapped those out to the uh what do you call it the um hawk pads oh really you just burped right in my face Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Nothing like a dog's love, huh? Uh, so yeah, the brakes have been much better. Uh, I still haven't bled them. <laughs> but, <laughs> I bet they even get better if I do that, who knows. But the, like I said, I just drive this usually to the mill. Uh, and to get the mill, it is like 10, 15 minute trip it's no big deal it's a lot of fun to take the phoenix and kind of ham it up lay down some some 11s <laughs> decorate the road because you know roads just look so bland but there she is in all of her glory and her uh big fat 275s uh very happy with how everything went together just to give you a quick rundown on everything it is an all aluminum 5.3 uh out of like a, a sob i think it is had the high like the high the high performance uh 243 heads on it and it's just the truck motor uh ls9 cam with comp 918 springs which are just a little softer than you know your your uh what are they the not the the 10 i guess 1018s or i'm forgetting now like the ones that matt always says to use <laughs> which is i've learned is a good thing it's kind of listen to what matt says and just do it because you usually save money in the long run uh ptfe line it is uh dual external uh, 380 fuel pumps with the slump, a sump, and return going to the sump. It's got the ethanol sensor on the return back here. Uh, post and pre uh, filters with shutoff valves in case we want to drop the fuel system to clean the uh, the valves on that. It's got the it's one exhaust on this side with a muffler and resonator and then up underneath there it's got just a dump with the loud valves so when the boost hits that thing opens up and does its business Reagan Bush 84 
It has a TH400 manual valve body, uh, just the regular pattern, uh, aftermarket built here in town drive shaft going to a 2006 Mustang 8.8 uh, .8 with Mustang brakes. I shortened those uh, using like a plastic jig and a steel bar and yeah, the Mustang brakes, the Corvette brakes uh 78 75 vs racing billet like fir first gen billet turbo so it's like a three inch exhaust uh yeah uh just a cheap uh ebay special wastegate it's a ls3 manifold going up and under to a custom uh turbo manifold I made and it goes to the downpipe snakes down between the headers and the steering shaft uh, all the truck accessories uh, snake eater uh, 1500 injectors the EFI source three bar map and that's about it and it's just got this uh, it's called a Sudan I think air compressor the kit was from ICT billet I believe they're called uh and then when they do the vintage uh air kit then all this box and condenser or whatever that is there all goes away and there'll just be a plate on the wall with some hoses coming up to the compressor and the what do you call this thing the uh, condenser maybe <sighs> stock brakes all that stuff was left alone stock suspension i did end up when i you know pulled out the cast iron block and heads that kind of lifted the front end up the back end uh was seriously drooping when i first got this car which i thought was a good look for it but uh the springs were beyond uh, repair so i ended up buying just the regular uh, uh leaf springs like the stock the stock keep doing this it doesn't really help getting annoying huh the uh i bought so i bought the stock uh leaf springs there's a stock right height uh, leaf springs from Summit and replace those and that kind of set the car at a decent angle it's got like a little bit of gap in the back right around me and the front a little bit too uh, but I, you know it has good ground clearance they got those huge rails down there uh, but I like this so this is my comfort zone because I'm too old to care about worrying about railroad tracks or speed bumps or any of that BS I just want to drive and that is where <laughs> so that is where the 1978 Pontiac Phoenix is root beer brown it's also many other shades of brown uh, stands today on Saturday April I want to say 11th I keep that number keeps coming to me but maybe it's the 12th I'm not paying attention and I'm happy with it good car uh, I'll probably sell it I'll probably finish it off I'll probably finish the air conditioner in the center console and then I'll put it up for sale on eBay and I'll probably ask a ridiculous amount of money for it because I put a ridiculous amount of work into it uh, and it's like a total one-off or you're not gonna find many Pontiac Phoenixes out there and uh, when the right customer comes along it'll be a good deal for them uh, and it might not be a good deal for everybody but that's how economics works right Bob Bob doesn't care Bob's been leaving me presents <laughs> all over my my my, my, my all over the uh, walkway here the driveway I guess you call it and we are starting on this guy so uh expect expect volvo 940 ls swap videos soon we'll be trying to stuff this block into me and it'll be good you guys want to look underneath it want to look underneath the skirt all right why not so yeah so if you guys never seen under a volvo it is front engine four cylinder to an automatic transmission to a two-piece drive shaft to a little cute tiny rear end with some weird suspension 
and centering stuff. There's a gas tank unconveniently placed over here uh, with uh, the, the trunk spare tire thing sitting way too low. And uh, yeah, so it's gonna be it's gonna be work to make all this happen. But happen it will. And as always, see how I did that? Be sure to stop by my website is monkeyfabgarage.com, monkeyfabgarage.com, and pick up all your turbo fabrication needs. And until next time, this is Mike with Monkey Fab signing out.